five mistakes that you'll want to avoid in 2024 if you're looking to enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan, also known as a Medicare Part C plan. Rob Sevilla here, also known as the Medicare Minister, and let's dive right in to these five mistakes. Mistake number one is working with a captive agent. What does that mean? A captive agent is not a bad agent. However, they're an agent or an advisor that only works with one particular carrier. And that is not good for you, the Medicare beneficiary. You want to work with a broker slash advisor who represents either all the companies in your area or multiple uh, carriers in your area. And the way that we do it here at Agape is we have a state-of-the-art platform that we put in your zip code, we put in your medicines, and we put in your specific doctors, and that tool tells us the plans that are available in that area and which plan is going to be best for you. So it's very crucial that you use an advisor slash broker who works with multiple carriers to ensure that you're getting in the best possible situation. Another thing that I'll mention here is I always tell people, don't try to do this on your own. It doesn't cost you anything extra to use a licensed, a seasoned Medicare advisor to help navigate through all the nuances of picking out the best plan for your Medicare needs. Mistake number two is not checking all of your medications and providers. When we sit down with people here at Agape, whether it's by Zoom, uh, phone, or in person, we get a list of all of their doctors, all of their various providers, durable medical equipment com companies, uh, chiropractors, uh, podiatrists, dermatologists, you get the point, okay? And we want a list of all their medications. Why? Because when you get on a Medicare Advantage plan, they are managed care or network-based plans. And if your provider is not in the network, depending on which type of plan you're on, and I'll talk about that in just a minute, then you could have to either change doctors uh, or pay full price for that particular provider. So this is very important that you check your doctors and then also your medicines. You wanna make sure that the advisor that you work with has a tool to put in all of your medications to make sure they're covered in the formulary or once again, you're gonna to have to pay full price for that drug or you're gonna to have to get some type of free discount card like a good RX or an RX Prime and just pay cash money for that particular uh, medicine. So you definitely want to make sure that all of those are covered in the network. Now, mistake number three, and this goes a little bit, uh, goes along a little bit with, with uh, mistake number two, that is getting on an HMO plan. We do not recommend if you can help it in your area to not get on an HMO plan because an HMO plan is very restrictive. As a matter of fact, unless it's deemed a medical emergency, then you cannot go outside of that HMO carrier's network. You really wanna be on what's known as a PPO plan. A PPO plan allows us to go in and out of the network, but we pay a little bit more in, in our cost if we go out of the network. Now, one side note that I wanna make very clear here is it is still up to that provider, hospital, uh, doctor to take the PPO plan. But in most cases, if you're on a PPO plan and those doctors or those providers or hospitals out of, are out of the network, they will take your plan. Uh, I, I've run into this multiple times per month where people call us that were put on an HMO plan and we have to move them to a PPO plan because maybe they were traveling or maybe they got referred a, a specialist that was not in the network. Now, real quickly, there may be some areas where only HMO plans are available. And even though HMO plans are going to be more benefit rich as a whole, we still strongly recommend that you go with the PPO. But if that's all that's available in your local area, then that's something that you'll want to triple check all your doctors and all your, medis all your medicines and make sure your hospitals are in the network 
as well. Now, before we dive into the rest of the mistakes here, if you are getting value out of this video, then help us help more Medicare beneficiaries like you simply by clicking the like button, hitting the subscribe button, and giving us some feedback below. If there's some questions we didn't answer or something we didn't address in this video, we would love to hear back from you. All right, back to our regular scheduled programming. Let's look at mistake number four. Mistake number four is not reviewing your Medicare Advantage plan annually. Medicare has what's known as an AEP period, commonly referred to as an open enrollment period, and that's from October the 15th through December the 7th, where you can review your Medicare Advantage plans, you can review your prescription drug plans, and you'll want to do this yearly because these are one-year contracts with these carriers. And they should send out a letter to you at towards mid-September, late September, that's known as the annual notice of change letter. And what that simply means is they're gonna give you all the changes, if there are to your deductibles, co-payments, co-insurance, and more, by law, they have to alert you to those changes for the coming year. You'll definitely want to review these with a seasoned Medicare advisor to make sure that that plan that you're on with that specific carrier is still the best option for you in 2025. Once again, if you're with a broker advisor who works with multiple carriers, they have a tool that they will put this information in and it will tell you what's the best situation for you for the following year. So you definitely want to make sure that you review these because what if your medicines change? What if you uh, have some doctors that have been added to your provider list? These are all things that you want to take a look at and don't fall into the trap of going, well, my plans always work for me, so it, it should be good for the following year. I see many people get burned by that school of thought. So you definitely wanna make sure that you review your plans. Now, the fifth and final mistake here that I don't want you to make when it comes to being on a Medicare Advantage plan is not using all the plan's benefits. Make sure that you understand that you have dental and where you can use those dental benefits. You have vision and where you can use those vision benefits. That you have hearing. If you have a hearing, a, a hearing challenge that, or you're challenged in your hearing, you'll want to know where you can use that hearing benefit. Uh, you'll want to use your gym membership. Most of them have gym memberships and you'll want to utilize that over the counter cards and more. I tell people you want to get the most out of your plan, but you can't do that if you're not using the benefits. So if you have dental needs, go get dental work done. If you have vision needs, go get that vision need taken care of and so on and so forth. So I can't stress this enough because I run into a lot of people who just sign up for a plan over the phone. They're really not explain the plan very well or they don't have someone that they can call and ask. And so they don't use the benefits and they think that their plan is not good at all. And I can't tell you how many phone calls I get or emails I get on a monthly basis from people across the country who go, hey, can you help me? Because I really don't know what I have. And when I explain to them and show them what they have, they're excited because they were paying out of pocket for benefits that were included in their plan. Now, I said final mistake, but let me give you a bonus one here, a bonus mistake that I see people make. And that is, not finding out if you can qualify for extra help with your prescriptions. And that is a big one nowadays because a lot of people are being put on these insulins like Ozempic and Wagovi and Monjero, and they're super expensive even on their particular plans or they're not even covered in their formulary. So if they can get extra help through Medicare, this caps all of their drugs and makes it a lot easier for them to afford that, especially if you're on eight, 10 or more drugs. And then the other mistake, part B of that, is not seeing if you can qualify for what's known as the Medicare Savings Program. The Medicare Savings Program is just simply qualifying for some form of Medicaid. I have many people that I work with that are going on a Medicare Advantage plan that will either qualify for extra help for the prescriptions or they'll qualify for extra help and 
even a, a low form of Medicaid that will help them get their Part B premium back, which in 2024 is 174.70. So this bonus tip that I'm giving you here to not make the mistake of not asking to see if you qualify, you know, could cost you hundreds, even thousands of dollars per year or throughout the lifelong journey of your Medicare journey. So you definitely want to make sure that you avoid these mistakes if you're looking at a Medicare Advantage plan. If there are any additional questions that you have, reach out to us. We're going to put the number on the screen here. We also have a link down in the video description where you can click, click on the link, fill out the contact form or send us a message and we'd be more than happy to answer any questions this is at no cost or no obligation to you. Well, in the meantime, go check out my Medicare, my three-part Medicare series here.